This video is the beginning of the series From the Ground Up, a tutorial for LibGDX's Scene2D UI. This is video number zero, not because programmers start counting at zero, no. Consider this a primer for the rest of the series, which will focus on individual widgets. The subject here is table layout, but first we have to explain a few terms. You can say LibGDX is comprised of a lot of different modules that you can choose to use in whatever way you see fit. You can use Box2D for 2D physics simulation, Ashley for ECS support. You can ignore all of these and make your own thing. It's a framework, not an engine. So nothing is mandated. This is especially true when it comes to Scene2D. You can choose to use Scene2D as the scene graph that manages all of your entities or actors. Some tutorials use Scene2D in this way as the basis for your entire game. Many, however, implement Scene2D exclusively for user interfaces. Scene2D.UI is the submodule of Scene2D that you can use to create menus heads-up displays, and much more. I'd like to argue that UI is the most developed aspect of LibGDX, and for good reason too, because the creators of LibGDX use Scene2D.UI in the professional animation software Spine. This is the greatest example of how you can use LibGDX for more than just games. Here's how Scene2D works. You have a stage that holds all of the elements of our interface. With the analogy of a play at the theater, we will call these elements actors. Each actor takes a position on the stage as X and Y coordinates, with position 0, 0 being the bottom left corner of the stage. Every actor has its own width, height, rotation, and other various properties. These properties can be changed during the course of your play. Widgets like a text button or progress bar, for example, are a special type of actor. This can result in some confusion as you will see later in the video. These widgets are largely composed of drawable instances. Drawable is a kind of class that knows how to render itself onto the screen. The most basic of these is the texture region drawable, which is just a static image loaded from a texture atlas. You can stretch this image to whatever size you need, but you'll notice that the edges start to get blurry. A better kind of drawable is the 9-patch drawable. This preserves the edge details as you manipulate it. There are many variations of drawable to meet different needs. Check the description for links with more details. Drawable instances, among other things, are collected and applied to a widget via a style. Style is a very basic class unique to each widget you use. It is necessary to create a style before you construct a widget. For instance, a text button would require a text button style. This can be done programmatically or loaded from file. Skin makes this process much easier as it helps organize all styles and assets related to your UI. Typically, you'll load a skin from a JSON text file. Sample skins can be found in the links below. You can also create your own skins with Skin Composer. For this example, we're going to use the Metal UI skin. This will demonstrate how to create a single text button and add it directly to the stage. In your new LibGDX project, make sure to place the contents of the skin zip into your assets folder so that metal-ui.json is in the subfolder metal UI. Follow along with the text version of this tutorial in the Skin Composer wiki. There's a lot of boilerplate code here. This line creates a skin from the JSON file, a stage with a screen viewport. Screen viewport is typically the best to use with your UI. Make sure to watch the video on viewports for more on that. Here we create a text button and add it to the stage. If you run it, the result is a little odd because we didn't position the button. It's just sitting at 0, 0. Let's try to reposition it in the middle of the screen. We'll place the center of the widget at half the width of the screen and half the height of the screen. Things will get a little hairy if we try to position multiple widgets like this. With a little bit of math, you will get this result. What I just showed you is the wrong way to do UI. Manually setting coordinates gets complicated pretty quickly when you start adding more elements. 
You also have to reposition every widget manually if the screen size changes. Thankfully, we have table layout to help us out. Table simplifies spacing and alignment. Think of an Excel spreadsheet with rows and columns. Each item added to the spreadsheet is automatically positioned relative to other items. A root table is necessary to arrange your content. This table will cover the entire screen and all widgets will be added to it. To add content, we need to simply use the table add method. Be careful to use add and not add actor. Add actor is a carryover from the actor class that you are not meant to use. You can add more content to the row by using the table add method again. To go down to a new row, use table row. The default behavior of table is to size all children to their minimum size. You must remember that when you use a table, you no longer set the dimensions of the widget directly. You set the size of the cell, then the cell sizes the contents. Do not use set width or set height. Normally you wouldn't want to manually set the size of widgets. That doesn't allow your UI to adapt to different screen sizes. Instead, you can have children grow to the available space. Grow comes in three different varieties. Grow X is horizontal space. Grow Y is vertical space. And Grow is both. Additionally, Grow is actually two separate commands. Fill and Expand. Expand tells the cell to take up as much space as possible. If you want to just evenly space the buttons across the screen, you can do the following. If there is more than one cell with Expand activated, they will split the space equally. The Fill method tells the contents of the cell to fill the entire size of the cell. These methods come in the X and Y flavors as well and can be used in any combination. Table automatically aligns all children to the center of the cell. If you want to change the alignment, use the top, left, bottom, or right methods. This makes sense when you have multiple cells with content of varying sizes. What if you have a single cell that you want to align to the left? This code doesn't seem to work. You have to expand the cell first, then you can align as you see fit. The confusing thing with table is that there are two ways to specify spacing between cells. You can use pad or space. The difference is that padding adds up. If you pad two buttons by 10, the total distance between the two is 20. If you set space to 10 for both of them, the total distance is 10. In addition to that, you can pad or space a specific edge of the cell. If you just want padding around your table, there's a simple method for that. Java is already verbose, but having to set the same properties for every cell is too much. Table default is the answer for this. Any properties applied to the default cell is applied to every new cell created. The defaults can then be cleared to return to regular behavior. An easy technique to copy widget sizes is to use the uniform method. This is great for making buttons look even without explicitly setting their size or calling grow on all of them. You can even do this with an empty cell to keep spacing even. Sometimes you don't want to use the exact same size of another cell, but a percentage of it. The value class can calculate this for you. This can be passed directly to the cell methods where you would normally provide a number. I just like having a ton of variables to manage. You can name a widget with a string value instead. You can find that actor by using the findActor method. This is helpful when working across multiple classes. So far this tutorial has covered very simple layouts and that is typically recommended for regular menus. 
However, you may want to explore more complex layouts for HUDs or utilities. You might want to have a title span over two columns of buttons, for example. This can be achieved with the col span method. What if you wanted a cell to span multiple rows? Unfortunately, this is not a feature of table. You want to use nested tables to achieve that effect. You put this new table inside of your root table, then you can add widgets to it. You'll want to use a nested table whenever a group of widgets would impact the flow of other widgets in the table. The layout of widgets can often be very confusing with invisible padding and complex drawables where it's hard to tell where one begins and another ends. The solution to this is enabling debug for your widgets. This makes the edges of all actors, as defined by the stage, clear to see. For example, let's take this simple table layout with one child. To add debug to a specific widget, use the set debug method on that widget. It is now clear that there is some empty space to the right of the button because of the drawable I used for this example. You can add debug lines to the table as well. If you add some padding to the cell, you can see some empty space around it. And you can easily tell how alignment works within the bounds of a cell. It would be tedious to have to call set debug for every single actor you add to your stage. Instead, you can call it for everything all at once. If you want to activate debug for a table and its children, call the following overloaded method. What do these debug colors mean? Individual widgets like sliders, groups, and images are drawn with the color green. This is actually a slightly transparent green. This is not the case for table, which has its own set of colors. Blue is the color of the table itself, and the padding or spacing of cells. Each cell is colored red. Green is the color of the actor inside of the cell. It is advised to use debug mode sparingly. It can become a crutch for developers if they use it all the time. Remember, if you can't tell where the edge of a widget is supposed to be, your players won't be able to either. It's a visual aid to see what is normally obscured by layers of code. Use it when a widget isn't behaving as expected. Activate it only on the affected widgets so you don't have to be overwhelmed by the clutter of lines everywhere. The Scene2D Primer is not a comprehensive guide to Scene2D.UI. The goal is to introduce basic layout techniques and enough background to allow you to follow along in the rest of the series. Please stay tuned for the next chapter on buttons. Don't forget to check your corners, compadres! And all of Earthrealm will learn the truth of death. Oh, sorry, ma'am. Didn't see you there. Miserable wretch! Insignificant speck of feculent scum! How dare you! <laughs> mm, still can't decide.